Hey guys, it's Dawn here, and um, <clears throat> today I figured let's talk about face masks real quick. Um, they, uh, meaning the CDC and a lot of officials, are saying that uh, you don't need to wear face masks because it's not going to do anything, and uh, or it's not going to do enough, and I don't really agree with that. I understand that they want people to stop hoarding the N95 masks, um, because our people on the front lines, the healthcare workers and such, they need them and there's a huge shortage of, of them for those workers and they need to be the first ones who have those. Um, uh, obviously if it didn't work or it wasn't helpful then they wouldn't be using it, right? But yeah, they, but they need to use it and so I think that that, recommend, that recommendation is more towards let's make sure that those guys on the front line have it and the rest of us, we need to be staying at home and um, protect ourselves by just not even being around it at all. Just stay at home, be safe where it's clean and germ free, right? Virus free. So I think that's what's going on. But the times when we go out as well, we still need a solution. Um, I understand that the N95s need to go to the front lines, fine. But, you know, give us something too. Um, so these are my thoughts about this whole thing and the spread and what we can do. Um, at home and uh, hopefully it helps. Uh, who am I? I'm a nobody. So um, if you follow my videos, then you already know these are just my random thoughts. Um, if you're looking for something official and all that, um, go elsewhere. Uh, this is just uh, me and I'm a nobody. Okay, so here we go. Um, first, uh, let's talk about this COVID-19. What does it stand for? The CO in COVID stands for Corona uh, VI stands for virus, uh, D stands for disease, and 19 stands for 2019. So it was named the Coronavirus Disease 2019, and cut it short is COVID-19, all right? Viruses are very small. Um, they get carried. Um, it's a controversial topic. If you really break it down, they don't know. They don't know. It, they know that it's in the air. It's carried, obviously, by droplets in the air. Um, so it's really the droplets that we want to control. And then we can't know how well they carry themselves even without droplets. And now they're even saying that they could remain in the air up to three hours. But when they are in the air, then it's really subject to airflow. So we really want to start thinking about airflow and particles. Very, very tiny particles measured in microns. Um, and uh, these are particles that you can't see. Now we know that particles are always in the air. Um, if you ever open the window on a bright sunny day and that ray of sunshine comes in and then you see all the little particles flying around, that always it freaks me out. I can't breathe when I see those particles, even though I know that they're there, even though I can't see them. But those are particles. They're always just kind of floating around. Well, imagine the virus or, you know, bacteria or fungus or pollen, all that. Okay. They're just, and they are affected by the breeze. Um, so we need to start thinking about airflow. The flow, when I am speaking, I am actually spraying a fine mist of droplets every time I speak. And that can be measured on how far it, it travels when I yell, um, how much further that travels. And then our concern now is what is in the droplets that I am spraying out every time I open my mouth. All right. And also, even if I close my mouth, when I'm breathing, then there is an airflow when I'm breathing uh, through my nostrils, I mean. All right. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, what's the next, next thing? Okay. So cough. When you cough, they have measured that it is about, um, every time you cough, you are spreading about 3,000 3, droplets at about 50 miles an hour. When you sneeze, you are spraying out about 40,000 droplets 
at 200 miles an hour, okay? Um, you know how they say that the uh, force of a sneeze is like that of a hurricane, right? Um, droplets can be sent out to six meters or 19.685, uh, 20 feet suspended for 10 minutes and carried by airflow. And remember with this COVID-19, they're saying three hours. And um, uh, okay, so obviously there are lots of droplets <laughs> all over in a crowded room. Basically, if you're in a party, you're basically um, covered in everybody else's droplets. It's all over your clothes, it's all over your hair, it's all over your face. Because your face, usually when you speak face to face, these are getting, which is why, <laughs> uh, for kind of a germaphobe like me, even before all this happened, I've always, you know, really wanted to maintain distance. And when people coughed or sneezed, I would close my eyes, put my head down, and stop breathing for as long as I could. And if I could walk away, walk behind them, or I don't know, I was just always really conscious about share our shared airspace and this consciousness is now what's um um i don't know uh really important okay so the n95 what can you do to protect yourself from these droplets um first off what can you do to protect yourself from the virus uh it's basic the virus is just so tiny and uh, so it's going to be a matter of just controlling. They say wash your hands and stuff. The reason why they say don't touch your face is not that there's anything wrong with touching your face. It's just that um, if you're out and people are speaking, you're going to be filled with droplets all over your face. So, so just imagine all these creepy crawlies all over your face. Then you touch it and then you take a chip and then you eat it. Um, so you transfer the yuckies from your face to your fingertips, then your fingertips to your food and your food into your mouth and whatever. OK, so it's more something like that. Um, it's not your face itself. It's that these droplets. Um, now, can they be? transmitted even without droplets probably but by that time it is really out of our control because we still need to breathe uh, but droplets we can do something about and how they figure it is uh, something like the N95 mask okay so it'll say N95 on it and what N95 means is that it <clears throat> will block out at least 95% of uh, 0 0.3 micron particles. 0 0.3 microns, that is very, very good. Um, when the, in 2009, when the H1N1 virus uh, pandemic hit, then they did do a lot of studies then on viral transmissions and stuff like that. And um, back then they were rec recommending the N95 mask. Um, and it's really interesting to read that, although it won't be very comforting uh, because basically there's still so much unknowns and um, how contagious a person is or how much they can spread the disease is very, is varied individually uh, it depends on how much viral load the individual has uh, obviously a person with higher viral load can will have a higher percentage of virus in uh, the RNA in their droplets and then of course controlling controlling the droplets and then some people um, can even be labeled as super spreaders that for some reason these people just carry their droplets just carry a whole bunch more viruses than than other people that are also sick because um, uh, because it's an individual thing they're not sure why they carry more virus why they're just you know they're they're super spreaders that is a scientific term <laughs> that they label these individuals all right so anyways the n95 mask typically it it forms around and you have to you have to squeeze this around your nose okay you have to try to make 
you're basically trying to make an airtight seal around your face and then this filter the n95 is it's going to filter everything and it's going to get at least 95 percent of 0.3 microns that still leaves you know a certain percentage that it doesn't get so once again this isn't a hundred percent nothing is um it's really interesting though because uh these are so uh in demand for our frontline people that they have um they have looked uh they the government cdc all that they have stockpiles of these that are expired like with all safety equipment uh typically it's five year shelf life and with this so like our protective vests our helmets it's all five year shelf life or until they've uh, been used these have to be um changed out very often uh if it's a doctor going from case to case they should change it out in between patients um, otherwise, if you're just running around, they recommend you change it out every eight hours. Um, and then uh, they have a shelf life of five years. Well, they have a whole bunch of these in warehouses that are expired. Their shelf life, uh, you know, it's, it's been over five years, and then they put them into storage. Um, the CDC is actually uh, talking about releasing those back into the public because of the shortage and they have been testing those ones and they found that yeah some of them fail um but there are a lot of useful ones and then they have leakage tests and stuff like that to try and go through and get those pull those out of storage and get these back um back out for our front runners okay but uh this is one that i've just had and it's it's old and expired and i've been using it and stuff but um, I just have it. And if you have one of these, it is best to keep it in its case and keep it safe and dry. And the same things, the same things for storing your helmet and your um, your safety vest applies to this. It needs to be kept away from the sun in a cool, dark place, uh, climate controlled, blah, blah, blah. Because the ones that were expired, their shelf life and... Um, and they're testing it the ones that failed were the ones that were not in controlled environments and were not stored properly the ones that were stored properly then they were still kind of good okay so that's all some random data over there okay so now we have um well something like this something that says n95 is your best something that has a resp you know or the whole big gas mask respirate i don't know but um you know okay those are your tops and then you have your surgical masks. Surgical masks are not really designed to stop um, anything like that. But if you do use a surgical mask, it's still better than nothing. And if that's all that you have, um, because that's actually what our frontliners are doing, they're not able to get these, so they're reverting back to surgical masks because that's okay. Okay, that's our second choice, something like that. If you do use those, um, just know that the blue side is your water resistant side there is a coating on it to repel water aka droplets droplets is what we hate and want to uh, repel not have it touch our face oh that's the other thing this thing where it's cone like that so it's not touching your face which is great because if you have something right up against your face, you still have to think of that the force of your inhale is forcibly pulling things through that filter. So to have this airspace, you know, helps. All right. So airspace helps as well. Um, what was I think? Uh, surgical mask. Okay. So the blue side has a water repellent coating on it. And the white side is an absorbent uh, lining okay so if you are sick you put that on and you have the white side against your face and the blue side out the blue side is going to repel stuff that is trying to get in and the white stuff is going to soak up your droplets and prevent it from going out also I mean it works either direction too so the blue is also going to try to stop those from getting out um, so that is the thing with the surgical mask. Uh, they are they are great. Uh, the only thing, oh, uh, 
most of them do have um, a light piece of metal that you can squish down around your nose. You really want to squish down around your nose, okay? I would say that it's not as important what's down here. If the, there's, there's gaps down below, it's not quite as important as the gaps up here because droplets fall down. Um, oh, another thing to mention, these droplets can get in through your eyes as well. It's your eyes, your nose, your mouth. These are the thing, you know, so that's why in the front lines they also wear full you know the face shields and i have i have mine somewhere but i don't know where it is but a whole you know plastic plexiglass face shield to protect their eyes as well so the, that is a thing um so sunglasses we can wear sunglasses we can wear safety goggles clear safety goggles we can do that all right that is an option uh surgical mask the problem with surgical mask is that it's not as tight and form fitting around the face the other problem is a lot of these um i don't know it might be hard to form you know some people have a taller bridge to their nose or not um or whatever so you it's but as the goal is to get a tight seal around your face you don't want those droplets getting into you and if they do, and you want a barrier between you and all these droplets that are just flying around, especially you go into a grocery store just trying to get some milk, someone coughs, you know, that cough is travel. We just talked about this, 50 miles an hour. If they sneeze 200 miles an hour, these droplets are coming at you, right? You're trying to dodge them, close your eyes, you know, but if you have your glasses, you got a barrier, just a physical barrier between, okay, you, you get um, so yeah, the problem with the surgical masks is, um, they're not tightly sealed around, but it's still something. So now those two things are still hard to get surgical masks and those guys need it and they, they're burning through it. It's something that they have to change out. And if you're not changing it out, then it, it, can be even worse for you than not wearing anything at all and why is that well you're wearing this thing around and you're like well I, I only got one so I'm just going to keep wearing it forever right so you go out to public this thing will be completely filled with droplets that have the virus on it let's just say this thing is contaminated when you take off your mask you're supposed to take it off by the string and put it in a trash bag immediately tie it up and dump it all like wash your hands okay this is biohazard now um we are going to assume that it is infected it is diseased so they have to do this because otherwise let's say this is covered with the virus and then you're touching this and then you're touching your face and you're like, oh, I got this mask. But then after your trip, you're like, oh, okay, let's take this off. Virus, right? Does it, it can, it can harm you worse if you're doing it like that. Okay. So you have to change it out. Um, okay. So what can we do at home? We can make, uh, we can sew up, we can sew uh, face masks. There's lots and lots of people sewing these. There's a lot of bored people, um, you know, I mean, not bored, but I mean, we're all quarantined, right? So we're all sitting at home. Maybe we're getting a little bored. Sew up some face masks, you know? Um, you can custom fit them to your face. You can mess around with patterns. You can try different things, different colors, blah, 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 uh, all that stuff. Um, if you're a sewer, you have that huge fabric stash now's the time to use it what type of material should you use you want something that is as tightly woven as possible a loose weave particles can get through so you want something that has a, the tightest weave possible and how you can test for that is uh by water and um uh by air you can get a cloth and hold it up to the light and see how much you can see through it, how much light it lets through. This is a gauze, 
and I can physically see the holes <laughs> in it. It's lightweight, it's airy, right? This is not the right type of fabric to use. Um, you have an extremely high thread count flat sheet that you have never used. Come on, focus on my flat sheet, it won't focus. But something, you see the gloss on it? Okay, very tightly woven. You can you can see how tightly woven it. Okay, this is a better material to use. All right, um, they say quilters quilters cotton uh, is good. Okay, so those those type something tightly woven. Now another thing that you can do is think about some kind of waterproofing. Um, this is this is a waterproofing cream. Uh, there are waterproofing sprays, although if it's a spray, you definitely want to smooth it out over your, and have that be a, a front layer, just like with the surgical mask, has a waterproofing layer, that blue layer on one side, and then the absorbent layer on the other side. Uh, the other thing you can do is double up on the layers, actually quadruple the layers, at least four, three, four layers, um, or the more la layers, the better, okay? Uh, this might last you even better if you put this on and then you put uh, something else over that and something else over that. I don't know. It depends on how deep you want to go with this, right? But um, the other thing is like, uh, I don't know. I don't know why I brought this out. You see this one? Oh, you can't see that. I don't know. This is too thin. One layer thick. It's too thin. It's not going to do that. Water droplets will just hit that and still hit your mouth, right? Plus it's very, it is very close to your mouth. Um, oh, that's the other thing, you know, the water droplets hit your mouth and then you lick your lips. Okay. So the other thing is if you have a bandana, just a regular bandana, right? This isn't the ideal cloth, uh, not, not, not your typical, your typical bandana. It's, um, it's not very tightly woven cotton. It's a pretty cheap cotton, but you can make it more efficient, more effective by doubling it up and then you can fold it again like that. That will cover your nose and mouth and then you can go around. Um, you may not have this uh, tight over here and then this is, this is open but it is Okay, it is something, it's better than nothing. And this way you have four layers. Now, if you think about it, you can do other things as well with this because you've got four layers now. You still have this. If you wanted to, you can fold this again. If you wanted to, you can also sew, um, uh, make filters with other claws that you can then tuck into this pocket over here. Uh, because you're basically making a pocket. You can do this, put in a filter, go up here, and then that is something. Now, what I like about this is this is something that you can very easily do at home, and you don't even need to be a sewer to do it, a seamstress, sewer person, right? You, you're at home, you have a flat sheet in your closet that you've never used before. It's great. Cut it into the square of... A regular bandana you can make it bigger whatever make it whatever size you want and now you have an instant something there's four layers right there fold it again there's five layers or no six layers sorry there's um, even more layers and now you have pockets already built in here that you can slide um, more fabric in if you need and make it thicker and thicker and thicker. You can smear some uh, waterproof dressing over the outside of it if you want, then right away. And then <clears throat> what you do is you're gonna wear this when you're out. And then when you come back, when you come back, you're going to take it off from the back you're gonna hold this like it's a biohazard and you're gonna drop it into a designated biohazard container or your washing machine, 
um, you know, don't set this down. If you do have to set it down, then you can practice. All right, which way was it? It was like this, right? So think of what was the outside. Only touch it from the inside. Um, fold the outside on drop. I don't, you know what I mean, okay? So, but treat it as a biohazard. This goes in there as soon uh, as sh soon as you get to your home or garage or whatever. Set aside a con container or drop it into the washing machine. Um, bleach and wash. And then the thing is, <coughs> these are really quick and easy and you can change them out a lot. Um, if you're going from appointment to appointment or whatever, you can have a wet bag that is designated for this or have a little stainless steel trash, uh, trash can or something, throw, toss all of those in there and have your whole stash. I have a whole bunch of these stacked up. Uh, I have so many. So you just grab a new one and then use them. And then at the end of the day, wash them all so it's ready for the next day or whatever. Okay. So that's what I like about these is that you can, you can really customize it. It's really easy and it's just something uh, simple that we can do. Um, let's see. The cons about face masks is that to be perfect, um, well, th there is no perfect, but it needs to try to close up everything, okay? Um, it, but if it closes up everything, then it can be hard to breathe. Uh, so people that already have difficulty breathing, asthma, you know, might be hard, might be difficult for them to use. Uh, for the most part, our masks are not made for children. So they will not fit a child's face properly, which is another uh, pro for making your own mask. Um, and then facial hair. <laughs> if you got facial hair, I'm sorry, but you gotta you gotta shave it off because it's not meant for facial hair. And facial hair does hold it um, outside. It needs to be skin tight because our skin is waterproof. Uh, me with all of my hair, I need to put all of my hair up because um, hair is hair is actually considered dirty. Um, so yeah, hair cut it off or or tie it up or whatever um and then of course i already said facial structure um extras antimicrobial coatings okay uh let's see oh n95 respirators are tested and they have to go through all this stuff the things that they test for is fluid resistance filtration efficiency against particulates and bacterial uh, flammability, biocompatibility, uh, da da da. All right, let's see what else do I need to say. All right, so I'm just telling you these things that they look for in order for us to try and make something that we can use on a day to day basis to keep ourselves safe in the meantime. Um, okay, I think I just ran out of gas. So that was that was it. I hope that helps get you thinking. Uh, stay safe and stay sane during this little outbreak. Um, everything is okay. We're gonna get through it, and there is no shortage yet of anything. Um, the only shortage is the ones that people have created with their panic buying. But um, you know, once everything calms down and everyone realizes that everything is okay, there is no shortage. You can go to the stores and get stuff um, on a regular basis, and you know, hopefully, once everything's out, then everything's restocked, and you know, we won't have to worry about the man-made shortage anymore. So, um, all right, thanks for watching. Hope it helps. Let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.